Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. And uh, today is our uh, Tube Talk episode. So this is our episode where we review some of the latest TV show episodes and talk about some upcoming new shows as well. And with me, I have Mr. Joel Cunningham. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you doing today? I'm <laughs> doing awesome. Good to see ya. It's good to see you too, man. What's what's this accent? I don't know. I think I'm just going to do it for the review today. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Crikey. Crikes. Crikey. Crikes. It's the flash. <laughs> Crikey. Yeah. All right, man. <laughs> it's good to see you, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good to see you too. Um, My so coffee is kicking in. That's what just That's happened. what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. I thought maybe you were hiding a shard of the philosopher's No, somewhere. that would be amazing. Right. If you I have know, one, you I would love to buy it. Screwing everything up if that was the case. <laughs> no, it's Avatar. Right. So there are a couple of things. Uh, we kind of have a little bit of a lighter show today, but um, but still good nonetheless. So I, uh, and I, I'm excited to hear kind of mm-hmm. a little bit about a new yeah. show you've been watching. We'll yeah. we'll talk about here in a little while. We talked about on the last tube talk. Well, I yeah, believe. we kind of hinted, hinted at it a little bit. A little hinty hint, but yes. yeah, yeah. So we're gonna talk about that. Yeah, it's gonna be rad. But I'm gonna spoil everything. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, let's actually, you know what? To remind everybody, we actually have a contest going on. Yes, we do. And uh, it's a social media contest, and it's an opportunity for you to win a fifty dollar gift card to AMC Theaters, well. which is pretty awesome. Yes, right, crikey. Yes, the croiks. <laughs> the croix. So, um, Wait, do you have one? No, I don't. I'm oh. sorry. Okay, I, t- I totally teased you. You did. Yeah, that, my just, bad. That's all right. I've got like three waiting for me at home. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so um, what you need to do to get entered into this contest for that AMC $50 gift card is find a picture or of a movie or a television show that you're most anticipating that's coming out this year. So that yes. can be, um, I know if you're into Game of Thrones, I know yeah. that's coming out. Yep. Um, if you're into... Prison Break, which comes out in a month or so, I think. I think a lot of people were into Prison right, Break. Right, yeah. But, uh, um, if you're, as far as movies, you have Power Rangers, oh, yeah. you have uh, Alien, you got Transformers got uh, 19, um, like Marvel. you said, Marvel Movie 27. 27, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All those things. Pretty much. So make sure you find a picture, you upload it on the social medias, and you tag at Real Review Media so we can right. find you. Just not Twitter. Because nobody uses Twitter. That's just disgusting. We use Twitter, <laughs> just, guys. Wait, we have a Twitter? We have a Twitter. Oh, we have a Twitter. We say it wow. at the end of every episode. Do we? I've yes. never mentioned the Twitter. I say the, the Twitter words. Yep. We have a Twitter, guys. This coffee thing, man. Twitter. Just, like, I'm recognizing things I've never Twitter.com recognized. at Real Review Media. All right. Well, I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter, Joel. Yeah, there we go. Yes. All right. But I do all the work on that, so great job, Matt. Sign up. <laughs> I've been watching; it's it's going well. Trust me, I'm it's seeing fantastic. <laughs> so um, cool. that's how you do that, um, and make sure to tag us in that. And when it's all over, we'll pull a name out of a hat, digital magical top hat. I'm loving our magical love hat. Yes, Wait, no, magical love hat. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll and we'll be like, uh, and if if we pull your name out, then you win. You win a fifty dollar gift card. Well, and you can share a movie with you and somebody else, and share a red vine. Hey, Matt. What? Let me hear some whale. Whale. There you go. All yep. right. $50. That's pretty $50. awesome. dollars So let's go ahead and dive right into it. <laughs> I want to start off with Legion today. All right. Yes. So- um, There's a lot to talk about. I know. There's a lot to talk with about. With Legion. Right. Yes. So last time we talked about, and I mentioned how the fifth episode mm-hmm. was my favorite episode of the season so far, because yes. we got to see a lot of action. We got a lot of explanation as to what was going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're learning that um, that David's brain, you know, at first they're like, oh, you're not schizophrenic. You're just a mutant and you have strange and awesome powers. Yeah. And now we're learning that he is in a mutant and he does have strange and awesome powers, but he is schizophrenic. <laughs> he does have somebody that's kind of hijacking his brain still. Yeah. Well, and one of the things I thought they did really well with this episode, which this is jumping way into it but right, right, right. I will say this they gave you a bit more of an understanding of his issue with Audrey right. Plaza's character right. which they kind of use that metaphor of the ant and yeah. like the thing kind of growing out of its head which was right. very gross looking yeah. but you get a very strong sense then of kind of what he's possibly dealing with yep. in this episode and I felt like the best part of the episode for me actually happened at the end the first quarter of the episode was kind of like what yeah <laughs> um we were respect like we were going I into feel that all- way about all the episodes <laughs> that's fair enough first that's fair enough. first 10 minutes of every episode it's like what yeah let me get my brain around <laughs> what you're trying to do artistically first yeah. and then we'll get into what you're actually trying to say 
I agree. That is definitely an issue there. But I, I, I especially did not, and I'll just say this, the breakdown of the music video that Audrey Plaza did right. for like, like the three minute period there. <laughs> like what is happening I didn't right even now? get that. I thought it was just super weird. And I get like, that's the thing we talked about this when we first introduced the show idea. I get some of it's going to be artistic and they're trying to go with like a style thing mm-hmm. to just kind of elicit an emotion and a feeling, but it's gone a little too far at times. Yeah. And this is one of that episodes that for the most part, a lot of times was going too far. Right. And they're trying to be different and they're succeeding, but it's not always to its benefits. No, I don't need to see Audrey Plaza doing a middle music video and right. Spanx or whatever she was wearing. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. A unitard <laughs> thing that was yeah. random. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I like this overall, um, Definitely not as much as the the previous episode, mm-hmm. but um, because what it does is it sets the context for how powerful this mutant is that's hijacked yes. uh, David's brain, essentially, because yeah. David has no clue what's going on. I mean, uh, Sid, yeah. uh, Sid, for the most part, I feel like has a bigger grasp on what's happening, mm-hmm. um, but but David even has no clue at, at this point in time, and it's just... I mean, they even have that interaction with Aubrey, yeah. you know, Aubrey Plaza's character and the, the, the fat demon man or whoever that was. Yeah. That I was, uh, guy. I know. And, um, every time I see him, I kind of like, <laughs> you know, one of yeah. those, um, we mentioned this, we talked about it. Like I'm, I'm fearful because they have these moments where Audrey Plaza is getting more and more physical with David. Right. So she's like making out with his ear in this episode yeah. and all. <laughs> so I'm like scary. really freaked out that what's going to happen is one episode she's going to be like doing that. And then they're going to jump to a shot where she's the fat man. Yeah. And it's going to be like him kissing. Oh, that's just like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Scaring me. Yeah. A little he's, bit. They did a great job with the makeup and the effects. He's Cause it's so freaky. nasty. Yeah. Freaky looking his eyes and his like whole yellow manners. and stuff. Yeah. Really freaky looking. And I thought it was really cool in a sense. I felt like this episode, the purpose of it more was to get a deeper sense of who that is, the right. fat man and kind of what his power is and what he's doing. I felt like he's coming across every episode even more intimidating. Right. And as you're getting more of an understanding of who he is, mm-hmm. he becomes more and more freaky. Yeah. Um, I thought they did a really good job of, like we talked about, introducing the idea of what he's doing. Obviously, the guy's got a very high level of esteem for his own worth and his own value and what he feels like he's capable of doing considering he said to David this episode that like by joining with him he's going to challenge God right yeah you know which I thought was really cool that you kind of get that sense and I think the other thing that was neat is that they're kind of going down this parental type path now where you're getting inklings of maybe the tie-in of his father which I don't know if we should spoil. No, this is a, so okay. we we always do spoilers on Tube Talk. Okay. Um, well, mo- for the most part, not always. Yeah. Um, if we're if we watch a whole series of something and uh, we want to talk about it, then then we'll kind of stay a little, little bit vague. Yeah. You know, to to avoid the overall arc. But um, with with Legion, if you're not familiar with uh, the comic book, because this is a Marvel comic book property, yeah. Yeah. David is actually the son of Professor X, so right. Charles Xavier. Yes. So. Yeah, you're right. They did mention him. Right. Like that he was, you know, he was given up for adoption. Mm-hmm. Um, and they kind of talk about him a little bit. But Yeah, and I'm wondering if like it would be so cool if there was like a crossover moment. Oh, man, that'd be awesome. I don't know if they'll do it. I mean, they've got two people they could rely on to potentially do, you know, a right. cameo appearance or right. something. But I just thought it was cool that they kind of dwelled into that. And I think as well, it does help to inform his character. So it makes sense that they're kind of going down that road. I think the elements of this episode that I really didn't like, you know, we already talked about it with the with the idea of like what Audrey Plaza is doing kind of felt just a little bit style over substance. Right. The description for this episode on Legion, and I think this leads into the other major issue I had, was it says David goes back to where it all started. Mm. So this episode really kind of felt like a retreading in a lot of ways. It's like, yes, you have different characters that are in there and they're doing different things and they're acting in a little bit different ways. They're all in this mental hospital. Yeah. But we've been to the mental hospital. We've seen that. We've experienced it. We mm-hmm. kind of know how that show runs. And so now you kind of just start to get the feeling that maybe they're just kind of, I don't know, it just it feels slow. It feels well, like they're biding their time yeah. until they can get I mean, to like a deeper issue. It's, I understand too. It's a full mental hospital. It's yeah. not real. It's not real. And Sydney is the one who's obviously, she's the one who's kind of piecing that there's something strange going on. Right. She's getting it. And then right. it was clever kind of in a way. It was weird how Audrey Plaza's character, Lenny kind of, figured out how to I guess hypnotize her with the the soundtrack the music the, yeah the little crickets and the crickets and chorus the, of the humming peoples humming people angel people yeah I, I guess, don't know <laughs> so, yeah there you go I think the main problem is things like you know with the door mm-hmm. a good example you're you're left with the impression that there is a purpose for this 
place that they're at that it might be taking place in David's mind that right. it's maybe just him transporting everybody there but it could be Lenny too it could be that fat man it could right. be you don't really know how this is all existing and based upon what we've seen in a number of episodes prior to this you really have to question it's like a 50 50 shot if you'll ever find out exactly what is going on right in this room in this environment in this mental hospital now why are they there? So you know, I, yeah. I, I'm not thinking I'll ever get an understanding of it, which frustrates me. And I think we'll break out of that here this next episode. I think so too. It's looking Scuba like Steve <laughs> um, <laughs> is breaking, Scuba is trying Scuba. to break everybody out. He, um, so that's Oliver is, is at least what I can gather. Who started out, who's trying to like get his wife to to kind of get her out of the yes. the mirage that you know lenny is imposing on david's brain or whatever yeah and um and then carrie i don't know he's in the scuba steve suit too and mm -hmm. he's trying to get everybody out he gets sydney out or tries yeah. to invite sydney out and i'm thinking that that's looking like that's a like a, a weird way maybe like a force field type thing right like maybe it protects the things that are going on from impacting right. you inside the suit so that might be a good explanation for what they're doing with that right. but again that's not necessarily something you'll get potentially an explanation. I love Jermaine. I loved him in the, his role that he played. I kind of wish they'd include him more. Right. So he's like a, he's implied that he's in this, but he's really not. Right. You, yeah. you just could use anybody in that. Yeah. Seat. I, I, the one other thing that I think they did, which was really freaky, but I, I didn't like how they had the eye talking necessarily. I understand why they did it, yeah. but I liked the fact that he kind of had that as his character, that he's just kind of this quiet, menacing force. Right that you didn't really know what his power was or what he could do, but he had this ability to like just be there and do the wrong things. Right. I, I thought that he was very intimidating though towards Carrie, the other Carrie in his approach to her, like the big bad wolf thing yeah. that was really gross and yeah. kind of freaky. So I think the one thing I can say about the show that it is doing effectively on an ongoing basis is making me squirm yeah, <laughs> and making me feel like, Ooh, like yeah. even the scene where she eats the pie and the worms right. are in it. Yep. Yeah. I, it, it, it's doing an effective job at that. I just, I'm wishing <laughs> That they would give you a little, a little more. What's what's funny? I felt so bad for David when his oh, sister no. wouldn't let him have the pie. Why I was she like, being such a jerk? I was like, that's so mean. He just like he just got done professing his love for yeah, cherry pie, <laughs> and he's like, yeah. oh, and he like puts his head down on the table. Yeah, I oh, thought that was man. pretty funny. I, I felt bad for him. <laughs> I thought it was horrible, but funny as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I, the one thing I, I, I've definitely left me freaked out at the very end. The claustrophobic thing. Yeah, you know, I think that made sense to me kind of what's going on that she's trying to it, I'm not like the one other element that I'm kind of not liking a little bit is this idea that for whatever reason Sid is like the the uh, she has the ability to like just break him out of this cycle right, because of right. love yeah. I guess they don't really explain that because of reasons right because of reasons so we have two episodes left in this season yeah, to get this sorted out yeah so we'll see if we're maybe able to wrap up some different stuff and really get some a strong sense of conclusion I think if it were to end right now. I would definitely not feel satisfied right. oh, definitely not, with what we've sure. gotten. We know very little. We've gotten very little information on where they're going with things. Right. I mean, there isn't really a direction beyond like David's got issues and maybe he'll get them worked out. Uh, yeah. And I'm curious to see if they're going to have a, uh, like a, a villain of the season type format. Like yeah. if they're going to find a way to get rid of this dude slash Lenny out of his head yeah. or, or whatnot. Either way, um, it, I, yeah, I would feel unresolved if they're ended yeah. now too. So I'm hoping they get a lot in these last two episodes. And you mentioned they did renew it. Yes. Right? So they have a second season coming. So yeah, we'll see. It did get renewed, but I would yeah. have to rate this thing. Um, I gave the last episode a nine. It was my favorite of the season. This episode, definitely not there. I did get some information. I would give it a 7.5. I'd probably give it about similar, maybe a little lower, okay. like a seven. So it's interesting because I'm looking at a lot of the reviews and you know, the stuff that they have on IMDb. And it looks like the more grounded episodes are getting generally the higher rating. Yeah. So, but their numbers of viewers are also kind of going down over the episodes. Yeah. So maybe over the course of the end of the season and the start of the next one, they'll realize that maybe they need to ground things a little bit more in, in reality. Yeah. So and we're yeah, going to talk sure. about a show a little later that... I think does this a little better. Right. Awesome. Cool. So that is it for Legion. Uh, next, I want to actually talk about Flash because I yes. know I talked to you a little bit about this, Joel. Yep. And um, 
we've kind of both expressed our frustration with this season. We disdain, have been Matt. disdain. disdain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd go there, but yeah, um, I'm de- I've definitely been frustrated. And this newest episode didn't do anything to help my frustration. It actually made me feel more frustrated. <laughs> um, so for yeah. me, we talked. To, you go ahead. And I'll, okay. tell, I'll I'll explain my. Things. I know you have a different perspective on yes. this, and I I, yes. I know where you're coming from, yes. but I don't feel the same. So fair enough. Um, it's so frustrating. I feel like every episode is is Barry making terrible decisions. One thing I really liked about The Flash, especially in the first two seasons, bar the last episode of season two, is is Barry is is just so is just so human. Like, yeah. there's a lot of mistakes that he makes. I'm like, I could see somebody actually doing that. You know, like, yeah. like it just feels very human. He makes a lot of mistakes. You're like, okay, this is just he's a faulty superhero. And okay, okay, that that gives a little bit more. Uh, reality, I guess yeah. you could add to it. Yeah. But he keeps, he's not learning. He's no. not learning anything. No. He's lashing out at people. He's, he's making, uh, you know, I'm going to sacrifice myself mistakes or like decisions <laughs> and, um, and not working, that not working out. He needs help anyway. Yeah. Um, and he, he's just doing really silly things. Um, I want to jump right to the end on this one <laughs> because I know this is where you're, where you differ a little bit. Yeah. I think as much as I don't, I don't necessarily care as much about the Barry Iris relationship. Like, cause I I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm not as huge on it as a lot of people I feel like might be. I don't understand why he did that. He's just being, he, so what he does, he, he breaks up with her. <laughs> He's like, let's take a break. <laughs> and you know, we were engaged and then she's like, no, we're not engaged anymore. He'd be like, why not? And then at yeah. the end of the episode, he's like, okay, let's take a break. Never mind. And um, so it's, yeah. just, it's just more CW drama is, is <laughs> what it is. So let me get my impression in go, here. So go, go. <laughs> overall, did not like the episode. I thought that the episode just kind of felt like like what you're saying. It's a lot of issues that we shouldn't have to deal with. The whole Speed Force thing is just added drama. Right. Like, oh no, the Speed Force is angry at me too. Yeah. Like, Again, added drama and stuff, but, but <laughs> I really like the ending. I know you do. <laughs> I know that I shouldn't because obviously it's because bad things are happening to good people, but I've never liked Iris and Barry. I mean, I <laughs> I've never liked that. And as well, I feel like out of all the characters on the show, if you're like all of them act in self-centered ways at different times, Barry, for the most part, has generally always been the person that's been the least selfish. Like you say, usually he's kind of like he puts other people's needs and wants beyond his own. And the times where he doesn't, the worst things happen. Right. Iris, on the other hand, I feel like the entire series has pretty much put her own needs ahead of everybody else's. And there's mm. been moments, there's definitely been moments where she's kind of sacrificed different things. right. right. But for the most part, I mean, even from the very beginning, she is dating this guy, but then also liking the Flash right. and like flirting with the Flash on the side. You know what I mean? It's just like in the whole setup of like how she's getting upset at everybody for all these different things that they've done to try and like protect her and like right. how we never mentioned the fact that her mom was this like druggy, crazy person. Like all these things that are just like, we're trying to help you, but then she gets all like, I can't stand the fact that you've tried to help me. I'm going to get angry. <laughs> so I feel like the reason that I like this, even though, here's the thing, if Iris was her own character that was like separated from Barry, I probably wouldn't have as many issues. I just don't like them being together. Right, right. I feel like this is the first time we've seen Iris kind of get a taste of her own medicine. Yeah, yeah. And again, I'm sorry. I know that's bad, but it's like she set this whole thing up by refusing his giving the ring when she found out the supposed ulterior motive. Right. And Barry never would have gone down this path nope. if she hadn't a, like sowed that seed of discord. Right. And so it was just so like, oh, like <laughs> burn. Like, you know, it's like sometimes it's best to just leave a sleeping dog lie and yep. you shouldn't do this. And so, I don't know. My impression is they'll renew their whatever. Like she's not going to, they're going to, if she does die, she's not going to die with them not being together. Right. She, they're gonna you know fix everything and then she'll die or they're she's not gonna die and then they'll get back together something like that there's right. no way they're gonna leave it on that depressing of a note in my opinion I would say this as well and this kind of goes back to your your other point I think it's very valid and very fair that it feels like this has been a very uncharacteristic season for a lot of the characters it feels yeah. like a lot of characters are acting in very uncharacteristic ways and they're blaming on the flashpoint I know which and that's is, so annoying it's very <laughs> annoying the one thing that I think is a little bit redemptive is if what I'm thinking is potentially the case, which is that Flash turns out to be Barry, turns out to be 
a bad guy in an alternate future okay. that maybe he is Avatar okay. or maybe he is a bad guy and he's done bad things, then in a way it kind of redeems it for me. It's a bit of a stretch still, but it then kind of makes sense for why they're sowing these seeds of discord right. among all the characters because they're showing how these cracks turned into fissures that then led to everybody kind of being selfish and doing their own things. Right. That's breaching. Like, if that's where they go with it, that's pretty bold. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty clever because you pretty much got me upset for like the last six right. episodes just to get to this yeah, point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but that would be one one thing that if they did, I would be like, okay, that's a little better for me. We'll see. I think there's still like five, six episodes left this season. So yeah, I think we've got a few. I mean, they're they're probably gonna have their face off with Savitar at some yeah. point. I don't know if it'll be this season, but yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Um, other than that, the uh, like Barry and the Speed Force. I feel like I've seen that before, where he's you know he's just getting counsel from yeah. people the whole yeah. time, and and you know it's like you know he's not going to get stuck in the Speed Force. Right. It's like they're not going to like <laughs> leave him in there for the next six episodes. It's like he's the main character. I didn't sense the urgency. I did like seeing Wentworth Mil- Miller, even though he's kind of a cartoon character. As yeah. uh, what is it? a. What's cold, cold, Mr. What do they oh, call him? Oh, yeah. Leonard Snart. Leonard Snart. Yeah. They call him something Mr. cold. Mr. Cold. They're just cold. Yeah. They're just cold. <laughs> I don't or, know. It's not Freeze because that's Batman. Mr. Freeze. Yeah, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Chill, <laughs> Flash. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I don't know. Overall, I was I was let down again. Yeah. I'm really kind of bummed out. I really hope they, they turn this beast around real quick. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I watched the whole episode. I pretty much got all the way through and was like, yeah, that's all right. And then I got to the very end. I was like, oh. <laughs> so, kind of redeemed a little bit. Well, I'm glad. Fortunately, I'm glad you got redeemed on that. Part. Sorry, Iris. <laughs> I don't. I don't want you to suffer. I just feel like it. It's more fitting. So I have to rate this thing. I'm going to give this five point five. Yeah. yeah, I'd give it a six point five. Okay, the ending, the redemptive like, ending the for redemptive you. Redemptive ending. Yeah. All right. Well, that is it for our flash. Um, that's our the end of our flash review. I guess I want to get into this. And Joel, this is all you, man, because <laughs> you've recently started watching another show. I. I, f- I watched the first episode, but I haven't yes. finished it like you have. And I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. What are we talking about? Yeah, so I have to tread very lightly here yes, because this is lightly. one of those series that things are constantly going up and down and changing, going left and right and twist and, whoa, what's that person doing? Yeah, and, and just yeah. so you know, we don't want to spoil this for anybody yes. that's listening, especially for me, because I would hate to have it spoiled yes. and I'm, I'm still There were some it. amazing, shocking moments that I don't want to spoil for people. Right. And that would be really bad of me. So, But I will say that I'm going to do my best to talk about some key things that might pique your interest and get people excited for it. So the show we're talking about is Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot. There it is. Yeah. And so this is a show that I had actually heard about Almost a year and a half ago, first time I wow. went. First time I heard about it was at a comic con. I had a bunch of they had some like flyers and posters up, and I heard a bunch of people talking about it. And this was after, I believe, the first season had come out, and everybody was talking about it, and it was like this big thing, and it just boom, blah blah blah. blah. But it was on USA. I didn't have cable at the time, so and for the most part, from my memory of USA, I did not have good experiences. They, right. Most of the shows that were on USA, some people love them, but they were tended to be very silly, kind of. Psych, what's up? Yes, and they were very procedural. I love psych. They were like these <laughs> usually cop drama type things, and I, you know, so I'm not, I'm not a big fan of it. But so I didn't really give it a chance. That was my fault. So I went back, kept hearing good things, kept hearing good things. Finally, watched the show. And I was very impressed. That's so awesome. So overall, very highly ranked, very highly rated. Now, good elements, bad elements. I will say the strength of this show, and this is one of the things that is much better than Legion because we've had this issue with Legion, is that the elements of the story tie in very well to the ongoing story and characters. Mm. They never present items or facts or issues that don't at some point later on come into play mm-hmm. and don't somehow get explained, even if it's like four or five episodes down. So it's like everything has a purpose. Right. Yeah. So they might jump into some other story or jump into the future and then revisit at some point, but everything does have a purpose. Yeah. And you never get the sense that like they're just doing random things just to be stylistically cool. And yeah. I love that about it. I love the fact that if this person says something or does something and they show you something... There's a reason for that. Yeah. It feels purposeful. And I love that. So, and let me just give a brief synopsis yeah, of the show do it. because some people don't even know what the show's about. <laughs> but it basically, the IMDb synopsis is it follows Elliot, a young programmer working as a cybersecurity engineer by day 
and a vigilante hacker by night. Its creator is a man named Sam Esmail. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but I think so. Um, the cool thing about him is he does not have a lot to his credit. He's got one other film that I can find that came out in 2014 called Comet that he was the writer for and the director for, but I, I, I don't really know anything else by him that's on IMDb. And it stars uh, Rami Malek, who is your your hacker guy, and then you also have Christian Slater and Portia Doubleday. There's kind of a, a whole cast of characters, but they're kind of your big three. Christian Slater and Rami are kind of your big two. They're kind of in pretty much every episode. Is it Rami or Rami? Rami. Sorry, Rami. Rami. Okay. Yeah. Rami probably is a better way of saying that. Thank you, Matt. No, no worries. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So the one thing this, this synopsis does not tell you, which is very clear from the get-go, is that this character deals with schizophrenia. He deals with mental issues of knowing what is real, what is not real, and false identities and the appearance of it. So if you think of in a way, oh, I don't want to spoil. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you I don't want to stay with. Yeah, I gotta stay bit. away from. So I was gonna talk about a movie that does this as well. Okay, yeah. I don't want to spoil the movie either. So I, I will just say this. So there is there is impressions of things that you're not sure of. I won't say people or specific things. I'll just say things mm-hmm. that you're not sure of. Is this real or is it taking place in his mind? Yeah. But the amazing thing that the show does that it doesn't do this in Legion is it tells you and you do find out cool is this taking place in his mind or is this happening in reality right so I've seen the first episode yes and I remember texting you immediately after watching it but um, but I think it one thing I really love about it and this is great just because it is in the first episode and multiple times yeah he's questioning reality <laughs> yes like, like you don't know a lot about him, but he's questioning reality frequently. Yes. Um, and and I told you that those are some of my favorite moments because mm-hmm. like there are some like crazy things and yes. you're like, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> and you're like, is this like is this guy going crazy? And then he'll literally two seconds later be like, Am I going crazy right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's the cool thing because I'm. This isn't a spoiler. This is in the show. He's he's talking to you. Yeah, he breaks that fourth wall. Right, he breaks the fourth wall often, but your role as the person in the fourth wall kind of changes over the course of the show, like right. kind of what you're finding out and what information that's getting shared kind of changes over the course of the show, but in a really cool way most of the time. Mm-hmm. The other thing I will say with the show is it's definitely a show for adults. It deals into, goes in some really dark areas, some really dark things that people do to win over other people. And right get what they want accomplished and the things there that they're some, willing. Yeah. There's some colorful language. I was like, that's colorful on language. USA. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they do bleep it. Most of the time they just kind of cut out like the F bombs and things like that, but they don't, they don't on, on Amazon prime. Oh, well, there you go. No. Okay. So yeah, I, well, I, I'm watching this in another place. So that, that surprises me, but it makes sense. So this show is very much in order of like a breaking bad or something type okay. show where it feels almost like a film. Right. It's a right. character driven show that deals with a really interesting topic and the people that are talking about the hacking and the work that they're doing. I mean, you really get the sense that these people know what it is they're doing. I know some things about computers. Like I know how to reformat a hard drive and I know how to like set up a computer and download and (laughs) install stuff. I know how to do antivirus stuff. These guys are like hackers. Yeah. I know what Google Chrome is. Yeah. I mean, because the normal, and the the thing you're used to is like, and they, the funny thing is, is they even make fun of this on the show at times. Yeah. There's all these like, comedy versions of like not comedies but like all these action movies where like this guy's like swordfish and he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna do the hacking and it's like this like interactive thing with like super intense like visuals and everything and it's like for them it's literally just type you know just sitting there typing and that's the way it is it's like you're (laughs) hacking you're literally just sitting there typing and you're going into like dos and so you really feel like you know he says i'm gonna hack the fbi and you really get the sense that he's doing that, you know, or yeah. I'm going to hack this thing. And you really get the sense that he's going to do that. So I love it for that reason. It dwells in some deeper areas. I will say one of the areas that, so two things that I'm kind of not, and I'm not going to do any spoils here, but I feel like the first season was a lot stronger than the second. Okay. I think the second season kind of lended itself a bit too much to the non-linear side of things Okay. and trying to kind of go a little bit different with it. I felt like the first season was so tight and yeah. perfect and just goes exactly the way it needs to and leaves you guessing. I like the non-linear structure at times, but it goes way too far into that in the second sure. season. I think the other thing about the second season that, or the other thing about the show that I don't necessarily like all the time is there is a bit of a social commentary angle. Okay. And it's not necessarily that I agree or disagree with it. It's not even about that. I think it just comes across at times like they're not just trying to share what these characters are thinking. 
they're trying to kind of have a soapbox type moment right, 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 right. with the social commentary. And it's like, I don't care what your views are. I could 100% agree with them, but I don't watch a show to get a ton of social commentary. If that's in there, if that's colored, I understand it. But if that's like a soapbox that you're just trying to use, yeah, then it just gets really, really not so great to me. But I'm super excited for season three. Cool. Coming out later this year. Yeah. I'm super excited for you to watch the rest of the episodes. It's going to happen. Can, yeah. Because I'd love to discuss in more detail with you. Yeah, and that's, sure. that's kind of all I want to say. What I would you rate it? Like, what would you rate it? The oh, geez. Overall so far. Season one, I would have given it nearly a 10 out of 10. Nice. I would have given it probably like a 9.8, 9.9 awesome. out of 10. Season two, I probably would have ran. I'm, I'm doing it because they were kind of pretty strongly different. I'd probably put it like a 9.2 out of 10 That's awesome, for though. season two. That's so. still good. Yeah, still yeah. great. So yeah. that is fantastic. Makes me really excited to go check it out. Um, but actually, that actually wraps it up for today's episode of Tube Talk. Wow, wow. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any questions about anything that we had a chance to talk about, then then email us. Uh, you can reach us at realreviewmedia at gmail.com. Go to our website at realreviewmedia.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Uh, Facebook.com slash realreviewmedia. And we do have a Twitter. We have a Twitter. <laughs> Twitter.com slash uh, realreviewmedia yes. or at realreviewmedia, however you want to pull that up that's totally fine instagram yes. as well i remember to, to join in on the contest if you yeah. haven't done so already i will say this if anybody wants to send me a red vine too yeah send some, i will uh send some red vines to joel or I'll, the croix uh, i might give you a couple added bonus entries into the contest okay <laughs> <laughs> ah, just that sounds shady a little bit yeah, yeah. okay but uh, other than that anything else you want to chime in on there no i think that's good cool man well it's been real it's been real